Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm... Something went wrong with the slides, okay. Um, I'm one of the authors of OSM to PG SQL, not, not the only one, just to, uh, just to make that clear. I'm talking about um, how to create vector tiles uh, with OSM to PG SQL, and some of you have been using OSM to PG SQL before, so they ask themselves probably how, how, how this works. Um, and um, so OSM to PG SQL is this tool uh, that takes OSM data here uh, on the left and uh, imports it into a Postgres database and then from then on we can create vector tiles and one thing um, I want to explain here is or what I, what I want to show here is that the second part the creating vector tiles is actually pretty easy uh, once you have the first uh, part uh, done and that's not the complicated part in the first part is the complicated part and um, I'm going to show you how, how to do that and then a little bit ab ab about the vector ties uh, later. So really my talk should have been named creating a PostGIS database with them to PG SQL with everything you need to create vector tiles from that. And then there are several options of actually doing the last, uh, last part. Um, so um, you can use um, the, the data that OSM to PG SQL imports. You can use it for all sorts of things. You can use it to create vector tiles. You can create raster tiles. That we have been using, doing that for something like 15 years now or so. Uh, you can build maps with QGIS or any other uh, GIS. So um, you can do geospatial analysis on the data. You can uh, export it to other formats. Um, you can use all the power and all, this, uh, and, and all the other software that connects to PostGIS. And that's what makes uh, the um, OSM to PG SQL so powerful is that it can connect to everything else in uh, our ecosystem. Um, OSM to PG SQL started in 2006 um, and had several maintainers over the years. Uh, first written in C, later C++, now it's C++ uh, uh, 17, so a more modern version of C++. Um, and it's used in many places in, in, um, in the OSM ecosystem. If you go to openstreetmap.org, the map that you see there, uh, OSM to PG SQL is behind that. If you do a search on uh, openstreetmap.org, uh, the, the search engine Nominatum is behind that, which also uses behind the scenes OSM to PG SQL. Um, I'm uh, active in OSM to PG SQL development since uh, 2019. And uh, a part of uh, the work that I'm doing is, is, um, is, is paid for, and I'm always looking for sponsors or uh, contracts to improve certain uh, aspects of OSM to PG SQL. Uh, it runs on Linux, Windows, Mac OS. We have Windows binaries that you can download ready-made binaries. That's always a question that comes. Um, reads any OSM data format, so the PBF or the XML and all that. Um, transforms the geometry. Um, to either Mercator or any other projection that you, you might want. It makes always sure that geometries are valid, so whatever kind of stuff you're doing in your database, uh, you can rely on that, um, um, and, and that's sometimes a big uh, uh, problem for some, especially analytic use cases. And it scales from very small extracts to, uh, to the whole world. Um, you can import um, just like the OSM data from the city of Firenze and it will just take a few seconds um, or you can import the whole planet and, and that still works. Uh, and you can keep the um, OSM data up to date in your database. So you run it once and then update. Um, and uh, that is now easier than ever was ever before with the OSM to PG SQL replication uh, Python script that comes with, um, with OSM to PG SQL. Uh, you uh, run the top two commands once to import the data and then the uh, bottom command uh, every minute or every hour or how, how often you want to update your data and it magically does everything. It gets the data from OpenStreetMap and updates your database. Um, setting up uh, something like that um, is, 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 is quite possible. It's not, uh, you need a machine with 64 or better 128 uh, gigabits of RAM, just the amount of data if you want to do that with the planet, if you want to do it with a smaller extract it's much easier than that. Um, and the first import will take uh, some hours. If it takes more than 12 hours, you're doing something wrong. Probably not tuned your Postgres. So look at the manual page um, and, and, and look, at the, uh, look at the manual on, on the website before you do that. Try it out with a, a smaller extract. Um, 
and as I said, it can keep, keep up with the Minitly updates. This is what um, the osm.org website is running. They're using osm to uh, PG SQL to update their map, and usually if you edit something in a, in a few minutes, it'll, it'll be on the map, so it does get it, 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 it works on that. So osm to PG SQL, um, those of you who have tried that 10 years ago or something, um, uh, they are used to a very limited configurability. You you'd always get four four um, tables: the point, the line, the polygon, the roads table. And but this is this is the old stuff. Or MTPG SQL is still compatible uh, to those things. Uh, but nowadays um, we do it differently because we want to avoid this. This is the the the, the problem when you are using. Uh, uh, OSM to PG SQL or some other products, you have to have these huge SQL queries um, to merge, uh, transform the data into whatever format you want uh, want to have. And OSM Carto is still still using that style, and and that's just just a huge mess. Um, today we do it um, differently. OSM to PG SQL has this new output format. We call it Flex. So you use the minus. Uh, 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 all flex com um, command line option, and then you have a very flexible configuration um, uh, written in the in a Lua uh, config uh, uh, in the uh, Lua um, uh, language, um, and you define exactly what kind what tables you want to have in your database, what columns you want to have in your database, um, what types all of this uh, sh uh, uh, they should have, and you define exactly how the data is transformed from the OSM tags. Uh, into uh, into the columns in the in, in the database, and you can have 100 tables or 10 or just one. You, you can define that. You can um, to a certain degree convert the geometries um, uh, to do this, and just so that you get a vague idea how this looks like. Basically, this looks like a SQL um, create table command, um, but uh, translated into Lua, um, and with a few extras. Um, you define here a uh, uh, high base table, uh, and uh, it has a name and a type and a one way and a max speed and a geom column and uh, of different types. Um, and you do that for every table, and um, then you write two functions, process node, way, and relation, um, that are called for each node, way, or relation that comes from OSM. And um, you uh, uh, for, for instance, here's an example, you, you, you'll get the OSM object, you check if it has a highway tag, then you insert it in the highway table. Um, you can um, uh, uh, then say exactly what data goes into what column. And what's interesting here is, okay, the name tag, that goes in the name column, the highway type goes in the type column. Um, what is interesting here, uh, for instance, is the max speed in, in OpenStreetMap, you say max speed uh, in, in kilometers per hour or miles per hour or something has different ways of uh, uh, um, defining the max speed and you can write a function in Lua that translates that and you can test that because it's Lua and it's not SQL. It's much easier to write these kind of things and I'll have an example in a minute. And uh, so you can convert the data in the, in the way you want uh, to, to have it in the way you want to. And for the geometry, in this case, we want to make a line string out of the way, uh, and instead of, for instance, a polygon, uh, which, you, uh, uh, which you can also do. Um, so here's an example from a map, and unfortunately, we're missing some of the, um, uh, in here, I want to create a map that has um, the viewpoints uh, on the, the outlooks, and the icon should be pointed in the right direction where the, um, uh, uh, viewpoint points to, and in the OSM data, you sometimes have the degrees, so it says direction equals 60, so you've got 60 degrees, I can use that. Um, sometimes it says NE for northeast, so I have to figure out northeast is 45 degrees, sometimes it's at 270 to 360 degrees, so to turn it, I have to find the middle one, and then um, and I, I, I translate all of that with Lua functions into exactly one number, and then I can, in the vector tile, I just use the styling, and it's just one little thing, I say, turn this by this many degrees, and, uh, and I'm done. Um, so, um, for now, uh, if you want to find out about different ways of, of, of uh, doing these Lua um, uh, configurations and, and, and conversions, uh, look in the Flex config directory in the um, repository. 
Um, but we want to build a library of modules so that you don't have to write all of these things yourself. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, all of that, everybody has the max, needs the max speed on the uh, direction of the viewpoints and all that. So um, we are thinking about creating a library out of that, and it's not quite clear exactly how this is going to uh, look like. But uh, yeah, please contact me and, 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 uh, and, and tell us about your needs. And um, uh, so this is something we'll, uh, we, we want to do. So new in the version 1.7, which was uh, released uh, 10 days or so ago, is you can now do operations on geometries. So if you have the OSM object, you can say, OK, I want to create a line string from this. I want to transform it into the um, 3857, uh, uh, so this WebMarkator. Um, uh, SRS in then simplified with this simplification parameter. And um, uh, just as one example, another example is you can uh, calculate the centroid of a polygon. So that's a very common need when you want to make a, uh, uh, when you create a uh, points of interest map. Points of interest that are some, uh, in OSM are sometimes stored as a node and just a point, and sometimes you have the building outline. And by, if you're not interested in that, if you just want to have the point, you can just say, um, as polygon colon uh, uh, centroid, and you get the centroid and import that in the database instead of importing the polygon in the database and then doing everything else um, after that. Um, and we're looking uh, at uh, what other things we can support there. So at the moment we have uh, calculation of area centroid segmentized, so split up a long way into smaller pieces, uh, simplify uh, of line strings, uh, transform into different geometries. Again, I want to hear what uh, you want to use that for. Um, but it is always possible, because you have a PostGIS database, to do all these things in PostGIS afterwards. Um, so we are not, we are not going to put everything in OSM to PGSQL, but just the stuff that is used a lot and that helps um, to keep your database small and everything fast and, um, and uh, allows you to, to use that without writing too many SQL things afterwards. Um, so now we have a database, but we want to vectorize. I did a little bit and switch here um, uh, on you, I know, and uh, just as the speaker before me. And um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about vector tiles. Um, so the only thing we need once we are in Postgres, um, we need a vector tile server that uh, can access the Postgres database and, um, and sends the data out as vector tiles. And there are many um, uh, different programs that do that, uh, T-Rex, for instance, or PG TileServe. Um, and um, so uh, what, um, what, what they can do to, I mean, they're all different and have their, their pluses and minus and, 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 and all that. But basically what they do is they look at the database and whatever in the, is in the database, they give you as vector tiles. And it's just a, a very simple format conversion. And now that you've put everything in the database in exactly the right way already uh, with the right geometry and with all the, um, uh, all the tags transformed into exactly what you need in your vector tiles, then it's just a simple conversion step. And um, I'm using T-Rex uh, uh, for that. I like that one. Um, and uh, one, one feature it has, if you start it, uh, you, you, you start it without any configuration. You just say, here's the database. And it would automatically export everything um, as vector tiles uh, that it finds in the database without you having to do anything anymore. So that's, that's a great first step to, to, to get going. Use OSM to PG SQL, import the data you want, uh, and, and, and get it out. Um, so, yeah, as I said, because of the processing and import, that's most of what you need. Uh, there's a little bit more. Um, so, for instance, oh, you probably want to say this table should only appear in the vector tiles uh, from zoom level on from zoom level 10 and not in the smaller ones or whatever. For, so, for these kind of things, um, you need the configuration. And uh, here's an extra uh, little trick. I create the configuration file for T-Rex from the same Lua. Um, uh, configuration file that I'm using for OSM to PG SQL and have all the information there so that I don't even have an, uh, another configuration file and then only for the styling, uh, that, that, that's a different thing. Um, so the missing piece here is um, the geometry generalization. If you're a bit familiar with uh, uh, vector tiles, you know that for the lower zoom levels, you need 
uh, to simplify the geometries, otherwise it will overwhelm your vector tiles and you'll have these huge vector tiles and will be too slow. And at the moment what you're, what, what you're doing and what people are doing is you have post-processing files in the database um, that, um, uh, that, that take the um, unsimplified geometries and make them simpler, uh, aggregate data and all that, and you can either use triggers uh, or you can mater use materialized rules, and there's well, several ways of doing that. Um, but they are kind of cumbersome um, to get right uh, and, uh, and to maintain. Um, so we are looking at getting more of that functionality into OSM to PG SQL, especially for the use case when you're updating the data. So if you're importing the data once and then run a few SQL scripts, that's fine. But if you want to change the data, uh, or if, if you want to, uh, the, the OSM data changes always, and if you want to import that, um, then um, it, it gets a bit more tricky. And you can do it with triggers, and it does work, but, um, but it is a bit tricky to get right. And uh, so I've got uh, funding from the Prototype Fund in Germany um, for, to work for the next uh, six months and doing um, a generalization support for OSM to PG SQL. So uh, OSM to PG SQL will keep track of uh, what changed and what uh, data um, needs to be updated due to those changes. It, it already does that for the ungeneralized data and it uh, should support that also then for the, um, for the generalized data and that's, that's um, uh, what we'll be working on next so, um, so that uh, it's spare, uh, what, what we can spare you of writing triggers and getting that right in the database. Um, yeah, so um, we don't want to implement everything in OSM to PG SQL. We want to use the power of the PostGIS database, which we have, um, to do this uh, processing, but managed by OSM to PG SQL. Right, uh, I have to uh, thank Thunderforest um, for their continuing support. And uh, um, I, as I said, I could always use uh, some more supporters uh, for, for all of that work. Um, and uh, I'm sorry about the slides uh, being cut off when you tried it uh, earlier, it was still there. Um, but this one isn't cut off, so the important part is there where you find the web page and uh, where you find me, uh, where you can find me. Thank you.